Today on Take 5 with Clean Facts, I'm with John Isaacson, the famous personality behind the Jojo podcast and someone who I can't get to do a serious recording ever. Hi, John. Hello, Jeff. Good to have you. Good to have you as well. Thank you for having myself. Yes, I'm glad our five minutes doesn't start until my first question because I have a feeling we're going to have a long intro here, but that's okay because, you know, it's all about you, John. And I want to talk about what you're doing with RA before we get into it because you were telling me earlier off camera and it was just too much for me to remember. (laughs) Go ahead. (laughs) Okay, so the RIA, most people I believe should be aware in your, um, your viewership, but the RIA or the Restoration Industry Association, aka the RIA, some people call it RIA. I've heard that. Yeah, I don't call it that. No. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it doesn't really roll off the tongue. So, yep. Restoration Industry Association. So, I okay, ready? Restoration Industry Association, aka RIA, has the Advocacy and Government Affairs Committee, the AGA, and I happen to be a member, one of many distinguished members, possibly the most mediocre of all the contributors on the Pricing Committee. So, the RIA, AGA, PC is one element of it. And then I'm also happy to be a part of the Restoration Industry Association, RAA, Regional Focus Groups, RFG, of which we are glad to be hosting the West Coast, uh, most likely in February, TBD. That stands for To Be Determined. Yes, I am C-O-N-F-U-S-E-D right now, but that's a different story. Back to you, JC. Hey, before we get into our question, who is that on your wall back there? Because it, I well, thought Tarzan, but. On my wall. This but, is a local artist from Tacoma, as is this. This is Frankenstein drinking coffee. This handsome fella. Yeah. Is James Helwig, AKA the ultimate warrior. All right. <sighs> Behind the scenes with John Isaacson. Welcome to the program again. Let's get into this, John. Five minutes. Today's topic is analyzing the difference between markup versus margin for restoration companies. What is a markup and why is it sometimes confused with margin? Be serious here. Great question, Jeff. Yeah, I'm going to try to be serious. I actually prepared some comments. So many people have posted. There's some helpful um, uh, worksheets that talk about what you mark up your estimate to get the margin that you're shooting for. We made a short video from the Diojo podcast on that. That should be fairly easy to look up as well. But markup is not margin. So as a contractor, you have your cost of goods sold, aka your COGs. So this is typically your labor, your materials, and your equipment. You have to pay those or you'll get beat up, right? You don't have a business. It's non-negotiable. We have to cover those. That's not uh, really up for question, but typically you add a markup for your overhead costs and your profit goals. So your costs plus your markup equals your price. Uh, In most industries, this is usually presented as a lump sum. I know um, a lot of um, ISAAs, um, or I'm sorry, ISSA, right? Not ISSA either. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, uh, is um, yeah, we got a lot of acronyms running around we do. our carpet cleaners. And I'm sure a lot of them present that as a lump sum. There's a lot of contractors that do this odd little subsect of insurance work creates um, this odd and often confusing. It's confusing for the client. And then it can be contentious with the carrier where we add this markup to the end of an itemized estimate, which is another thing unique to insurance work. Um, And so at the RIA, with the AGA, with the pricing committee, um, they've released several position statements that are trying to tackle the most common things that contractors deal with uh, in that insurance ecosystem. And so this is one that we're tackling. And this this starting point is helping contractors understand markup is not uh, margin. So just because you add 10 and 10 to the end of an estimate, and that's an arbitrary number, Um, Can I get an amen? Um, 20% isn't what most contractors actually live off of to pay their overhead or their profit goals. Um, But this this markup at the end of an estimate, if you add 
20% as a markup to your costs, you're only going to net uh, a gross margin. Now we're adding more terms of 16.67%. Again, I don't think we have time to go far into that, but that the video we produced and many others have talked about. So the this paper, the working title right now is markup is not margin. There'll be an infographic. It'll present that really nice uh, presentation of this information, but markup is what you add. Margin is what you make. So it's important for the contractor to distinguish between the two. Okay. So what you mentioned as far as those other videos and assets, we'll put in our video description down below for those watching this can access your podcast there. Uh, you talked about margin, you explained what it was, but how can a contractor protect profits? Um, so I think, I think part of what we're, what we're trying to do here is as a starting point is understanding that markup is not margin, uh, mm -hmm. helping contractors understand, you know, your, your true cost. So you have as a contractor, if you cover your labor materials and equipment, right, then you're, you're at zero, you haven't made anything extra. So all those things like your insurance, your office, um, you know, uh, insurance on your vehicles, all those kinds of things that aren't direct job costs. If you don't add something to your real costs, your direct costs, um, you're going to find yourself at the end of the year not paying, you know, having money to pay for your taxes and, and those renewals and all those kinds of things. So a contractor has to charge for overhead, needs to dive into their numbers and understand what their overhead is and reflect that accurately in what they're charging to their customers. Uh, and then profit is your goals for uh, growing your company and continuing to be competitive year after year. So uh, like we said, if all you're doing is adding 20% to the end of an estimate, you know, you're, or a factor of 1.20, you're going to net 16.67, which typically for most contractors isn't enough to cover what they need to cover. So we're working, again, the starting point markup is not margin. So working through trying to get contractors on the same page, talking about the same thing so that we can begin to tackle some of those other issues that really affect us being able to cover I believe labor and supervisory is a direct cost. You know, that's something that often comes up in um, insurance work. All other industries charge for labor and supervisory, but it's embedded in lump sum. Ours is uniquely itemized if you're using programs like Xactimate. Um, and then also hitting your overhead and your profit goals. You know, to, to really be able to present that, you have to understand what that what that is, and then how to, to speak consistently about it and present that both to your customer and to the carrier so that everybody's on the same page. Perfect. Makes sense. Well, John, we're out of time, but thank you for this today. Yep. Done. Done. See you at the trade show. Okay. Have fun. All right. Bye. <laughs>